Today I'm going to show you how I was able to uh, train a model using Amnesty database which contains handwritten digits 0 to 9, uh, images of 28 by 28 pixels. Amnesty database contains 60,000 examples for training and 10,000 examples for testing purposes. I was using Keras. Keras is a high level neural network API which uh, make it simple for me to access Amnesty database trying to take it to my model. And TensorFlow is an open source machine learning framework. Quickly let us look at the code, how I was able to write this. For this particular case, I was having difficulty to run this, um, this summary of, the, uh, of, the, of my model. So I'm going to run this uh, first cell, which actually uh, give us um, access to run the summary at the end because I was having some difficulty to running this summary, which I'll show you in a moment. So it's connecting to a notebook. I was able to integrate in PyCharm with the notebook. So it gives me this uh, good representation. In this uh, cell, I'm trying to uh, use Keras to connect me to MNES database to retrieve those uh, images. So you can see it's running TensorFlow in the background. In this cell, as you can see, I'm trying to separate uh, uh, the data for testing purposes and training purposes. So I'm going to also run this cell. But also in this cell, I'm going to import matplotlib to show you the images or the graphs in this notebook. And you can see this line actually gives me access to see uh, the images inside my notebook. So I'm going also to run this to import this. But also, I just want to see the shape of my training model. Like I said, this training data for MNEST contains 60,000 data. As you can see, uh, this containing 60,000 and also the size of images is 28 by 28 pixels. After that, I just want to access the first image in the array. Uh, when I run this one, you saving this to a variable and using multiple lib, I can also be able to see the images uh, in this position or in an array. But also using this grayscale, by default, I uh, said it contains only one channel, but this will give me the option to see the number written in black, but the background to be in white. This is somehow uh, related to number five. So how do we know that? Um, so let me show you what contain in the training data. You can see the first record is number five, like we have seen here. So we kind of give this mechanism or intelligence to a machine. If it see number five, it, it can recognize it that this is number five. But also now we want to use Keras to make sure that all the record are in zero and ones. And this particular case is referred to as one hot encoding mechanism so I'm going to import this one and also run it's very important for machine learning to understand these values as zero and one so that it can run in an in a way that a neural network can process this data so when I run this cell we will see that for example in this uh, number five we can find that the the, the general category or the, the features that we have in, in this data set are 0 to 9, which is 10. So we will start counting from 0, 1 to 4, where we can find uh, number 1. So you can see when we're counting this one and we find number the place where there is 1, which means this is the number that is represented here. You can find that this value is 255, but we want to encode in this and we have already performed this value. So our, our task now will be able to uh, take this value and uh, divide with its maximum value. Then we can get the representation in one hot encoding. 
So I'm going to run this cell to kind of give uh, this value. I've been one hoot encoded. We can find that the maximum value should be one and not 255. So I'm going to run this cell. You can see that the uh, maximum value should be one. There will be no changes from the image above. It's the fact that uh, we divided by the maximum value to get uh, an average of one in the in, in the in, in the entire cell. So we can see that there will be nothing which has changed so far, as you can see. So everything is intact, but now the value does not exceed one. So we're going to reset this by adding the channel uh, of for, for color. Like I said, this uh, data containing only one channel for color. So I'm going to add that channel to this shape. So nothing much has changed. But now when we look at this uh, variable that we created, now we can see the difference in the shape of it. So we are going to do the same in the testing data by adding that uh, one channel that of, of color so also when we see the shape of um, of this test data we can also see that that channel has been added to our model so now it's an important area where we are uh, kind of preparing ourselves to train the model so we are going to see that uh, we are using carers also to import uh, sequential which is um, a model for training so for deep neural networks and you can see that we're using lots and lots of these layers to kind of training our neural network values so I'm going to import those then we are going to add this model which have been created by these scientists and researchers so that we can use and you are kindly um, being invited to change this model however you see that can fit to your environment so I'm going to run this chunk of code uh, which kind of add more layer to a neural network using convolution in neural network pulling layer and changing one layer uh, two layers to one layer because the output should be one uh, one layer so dense layer and everything that um, which uh, kind of give us the result of what we are expecting so I'm going to run this very quickly and now we want to see uh, the summary of what has been done for that case so when I preview the summary everything uh, seems to be fine like you can see now we are ready now for training our model so when training the model in tensorflow we use this function fit uh, from that model which we have chose so I've passed my variable and I want to run this in two epochs that training in two sessions so I'm going to run and this might take uh, uh, several minutes for your machine don't worry about that uh, you can try to wait and take a moment and if the model is such uh, it's very big it might take some days or weeks to train the model don't worry sit back and relax and just waiting for the model to be trained and then you can find the result but be aware that when there is some mistakes which are made along the way you have to stop then you kind of have to uh, wait for another addition time so for my case it's moving so fast and I'm okay with that then we are going to move to the next step where we want to see the matrices that came uh, with this result then we can evaluate our results so I got the output of loss and the accuracy which is something that we want so when we evaluate how the model how the model is being trained we can run this and see what uh, uh, how it's doing pretty much good like you can see it's doing well like 98% and, uh, and something like that so it's doing very well so now we want to get the classification report how how is the test so far went then we can see accuracy in the predictions so I'm going to import this one from scikit-learn then I'm going to 
see the prediction by providing the test data. The model is being trained. Now we want to test with uh, corresponding data, which are not seen yet by the model. So this is some kind maybe if we, uh, we were to run this in real world environment, we can say that uh, this is like introducing a new data in which a machine does not uh, ever seen before. So I'm going to run this to run that prediction and see if the machine can give us the report, uh, the comparison or how it has done well in the uh, classification or prediction for this uh, data, which it didn't see before. So I'm going to run this final report and we can see that we get um, uh, such a wonderful report from uh, this data. We can see the precision and recall and scope and everything. Uh, you can find that most of the time the machine has been able to uh, kind of give us the results that we wanted. So uh, this is uh, pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you. And I believe I have a couple of models which I wanted to learn. And I will be sharing some of the content that I'll find so far along the way. Uh, but also feel free and I, I, I'm still learning and you can find something which uh, you can add value to what I've been discussing here. So don't worry, just give me, uh, leave a comment in this YouTube channel and we can learn together how we can continue uh, to improve in what we can, uh, we, we can do to support the machine learning and artificial intelligence in general. But also feel free. Uh, to share with me other models which uh, might perform very well for this case. Until next time, my name is Esaya 